do you ever wish that you had more time to spend in God's word or spend in prayer, but you're so busy taking care of the kids or your husband or the house or working that your life feels a little chaotic and you just can't find the time to do the things you want to do? If so, you're going to find today's conversation so helpful. Today, we are talking with Tony Ann Mayembe from realhappymoms.com all about how she makes it all work as a busy working mom who has a website and a family and all of the things. In today's conversation, she's sharing some of her best tips and tricks and kind of what that looks like for her and her family. And I'm also sharing some behind the scenes tricks and tips of, you know, how this all works in my family as well. We both have a little bit of a different take on things, but we're hoping that through this conversation that you will see, even if you are a busy working mom or you have a lot going on, that that doesn't have to prevent you from time in God's word. You can use the strategies that we share today to figure out, okay, what does this look like for me? How can I engineer life so that I have time for God, so that I have time for my family, so that I have time for myself without going crazy? Now, throughout this interview, we are real moms. We did have kids and dogs and all the things in the background, and that's okay because the point isn't to be perfect and have this you know beautiful, perfect, quiet time. It's to figure out how does this look like in real life. So hopefully, today's interview will give you a ton of practical tips and suggestions that you can use in your real life to prioritize the things that matter most to you. All right. Well, Tony, Ann, thank you so much for coming on the podcast with me today. Will you start by telling us just a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, yes. And thank you, Brittany, for having me. I really appreciate you and your time for letting me come on today. So I'm Tony Ann. I am a wife and mom first. I'm also a full-time dentist and reservist in the Navy and also the creator of Real Happy Mom. Um, it is a blog and podcast to help busy working moms get encouragement and practical tips for motherhood because as you know, being a mom can be a little bit challenging. So that is what the Real Happy Mom is for is to just have that support and um, just some practical tips and, and tr strategies, because uh, I find that you don't get an instruction manual or a book when you bring your child home, <laughs> you figure things out. And um, there's a lot of moms that have been there, done that, who are sharing some really great things over there on the podcast. So that is a little bit about me and Real Happy Mom. Well, thank you so much for what you do. I know that I did a survey with our audience lately, and so many of my readers are saying, okay, we know what we're supposed to do. Like, we know we're supposed to read our Bible. We know we're supposed to pray. We know we're supposed to do all of these things, but we just don't do them as often as we should. Um, the main reason being because we're busy. Um, whether that is, you know, not all of my audience has small kids. Some have our empty nesters now or have kids who are um, in high school. So my readers kind of run the gamut of all ages, all stages. Um, but the thing they all have in common is we're just so busy and we want to make sure that we are having time for the things that matter most to us. So the first thing I want to know is how on earth do you have time to work as a full-time dentist and also run your website and be a Navy reservist and still be a wife and mom and not look like, I mean, you don't look like you're on fire. So that's a good <laughs> thing. Somehow you're holding it together. Yes, yes. Um, it's, I was about to say a lot of prayer and crying. No, seriously, though, it, it's, it's definitely a lot of support. And, and, and Brittany, I think you can attest this too, that a lot of times we try to do everything on our own. Um, especially as moms. I don't know why moms feel like it's a badge of honor to like do everything by themselves. But in the process, we end up running ourselves um, really ragged, honestly. Um, but really, it takes a lot of getting support asking for help, and then also having some routines and planning in place are the main ways that I'm able to manage all the things without um, going crazy. Because I will be honest, this past week has been a rough one for me. Um, <laughs> it was really, really challenging um, just because being a reservist in the Navy, you think that, oh, you know, the commercials say, you know, one week, a weekend a month and um, two weeks a year is all you're required to serve. But truly, I work more than that. <laughs> I, I work a lot more than that. And, and it, it can get really challenging. But yes, definitely asking for help, getting routines and having a plan in place is the way to go for sure. 
So I know you talk a lot about your Sunday planning routine. Will you walk us through what that looks like for you? What are you actually planning or prepping on Sundays? Does it take you the whole entire day? And what does that kind of look like for you? Yes, yes. I love my Sunday routine. Um, this routine is one that I really think has been the game changer for me as far as how my weeks run and so that I can be a lot happier and less overwhelmed throughout the week. And, and honestly, Brittany, it really boils down to, for me, eliminating the things that will cause decision fatigue. And for those that are listening, they're like, what is she talking about? The way I like to think about it is we have about 100 good decisions that we can make in a day. It's probably more than that, but we're going to say 100 for, for simple math. So we have 100 good decisions that we can make in a day. If I use 50 decisions by 7 a.m. trying to figure out what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear, by the time I get to 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, I've exhausted all of my good decision-making power. And one of two things happens. Either I don't make a decision at all, or I make really poor choices. So what I found is that if I take time on Sundays to prepare things and get things ready to go for the week, it eliminates a lot of that decision fatigue that I have throughout the week. So there's a couple of main things that I like to do on Sundays, and there's five things, and we can deep dive into them, but I'm gonna just touch on them really quick. So the first thing is getting your clothes ready for the week and not just getting like your work clothes, like get everything ready. So if you know you have a hot date on Friday, get your day night clothes ready. If you know you have a really important meeting, you want to look sharp, get that ready. For me, I know I had a uniform inspection on Saturday. You want to make sure you have all these things ready to go so you don't have to think about it. The second thing would be to clean out your purse because as women, we have these nice, wonderful purses, especially us that have the big purses. It's a lot of things that can get lost in there. And really quick, funny story. I had a straight up attitude with my husband because I could not find my keys. And I was like, what did you do with my keys? Where are my keys? I can't find my keys. My keys were in my purse, Brittany. And so I have learned that I got to go through my purse on a regular basis to make sure that the things that are not supposed to be there are out and the things that need to be in there are in there. And then the third thing would be to actually make a menu, not necessarily saying that you have to meal prep, but have a menu for the week. So you know what to um, either get ready for the week or what you already have. And then um, restarting your devices is number four, because um, I think all of us use some type of electronic throughout the day, multiple times a day, and nothing is worse than when your computer decides it wants to crash or starts running slow, or even your phone decides it doesn't want to open an app. It is super frustrating. So restarting your devices is going to help to eliminate a lot of the frustration that comes with these devices um, running slow and crashing and things like that. And then... Um, Lastly, you want to plan your week. So for me, it's looking at everyone's schedule because Brittany, I have had so many frustrations with my husband because we had conflicting schedules. So I'm sitting over here thinking that I'm going to be doing this and I can do these things with my husband, but I have not talked to him and let him know and see what's on his schedule. And then also what's on the kid's schedule, because um, I'm sure you can can relate to, you know, wanting to be that mom that has the, the kids ready for Wacky Wednesday and, and Superhero Day. Um, and if you forget, you feel really bad, even though it's really like minor, but still like you want to make sure that you're kids are prepared. So having um, a plan for the week and knowing what's coming up really helps to eliminate a lot of that and especially deconflicting some of the schedules um, that may be conflicting um, with each other. And then also making time for yourself too as well when you're planning out the week. So those are those top five things that I do on Sundays. And it literally can take like 30 minutes if I do it right. It doesn't have to take the whole whole Sunday. Um, but doing that 30 minute of prep time will save you tons of time throughout the week. And that's so interesting to hear the way that you do that. Because when I, in the past, have heard people talk about, okay, on Sundays, I get ready for the week. I'm like, so you take your like one day a week that you have to actually like rest and you spend the entire day like doing, it just seems like, oh, you're going to be working seven days a week. So I love the way that you put it. You're like, oh, that doesn't sound like you work. You're just like, oh, just getting things ready for the week. And it doesn't take long at all. I love that. And I love hearing the way that you do it because it's going to be different for every single person. If there's somebody who's listening right now, who's like, oh yeah, I need to, those five things would be really helpful for me. I want to do those five things too. Then absolutely rewind. I know it's not, we don't rewind anymore. Um, Go back write them down and do them, but 
even more than that, rather than saying, oh, she does these exact five things. I need to do these exact five things. Okay. What are the things that you are finding? And this is something you can just pay attention to. What are the things that you are finding throughout the week that are causing you the most stress and struggle? And how can you make a plan for those things in advance? So when you're talking about, okay, you pick out your outfit every day, I'm like, you know, I don't or you pick out your outfit over the week in advance. Like, you know, I don't do that because other than today, which I'm like actually dressed, um, most days I work from home and I have basically a uniform where I have the same pair of pants, you know, multiple pairs, but they're like I have multiple of the same pair of pants. I grab the pants. I grab the exact same version of multiple tank tops that I have. And then I have the same t-shirt in multiple colors. So literally it's no drama. I don't plan it out in advance because I'm like, okay, pick, I need a piece of each of these. And I just, my biggest decision is, do I want to wear pink or purple today? Um, not a big deal for me. But when you were talking about restarting your devices, I'm like, oh no, what if my computer crashes in the middle of this interview? Cause I ignored it yesterday. So as you're listening to this, I want everybody who is listening to think through, okay, what are the things that are causing me trouble? Where are the places where I'm routinely getting stressed out? My husband and I just did yesterday, two days ago, I think we actually sat down um, because I'm the one who does the grocery shopping for our family. And I try to like, guess what he wants. And I'm always like off and then like get the really close kind of breakfast sandwiches, but like not quite the right ones. And he's like, those are gross. And I'm like, you know, let's just sit down. Literally, we pulled up the grocery store app on my phone and I was like, please, we are going to make a list. I want to know, like, we're going to go through, like, do you like this one? I think you like this one. No, it's this one. We need a list so that now I have a list. When I go to the grocery store, I don't have to walk down every aisle and be like, wait, which one was it again? Like, did he like this one or this one? Like, that was just one thing that I found this week that I'm like, no, we're going to just figure this out. What do you like? Let's get a list. So now the next time I go to the store, I'm looking forward to it. Like I know what things to buy and not. So it's just a matter of, okay, what things can you do in advance to make life a little bit easier on yourself? Um, stacking up on things. If you know that you always need to send in snacks or you always are going to need those presents for a birthday party, anything that you can do. I love how you talked about decision fatigue. That is a big thing that I talk about. Um, I don't use the word decision fatigue, but it was like, oh, that makes sense. That's why I talk about choosing when you're going to read your Bible, because that's one less thing that you have to think about. So let me ask you, what if you said you have a lot of support? What if you have a husband or you don't even have a husband or your husband's not very supportive and he feels like, okay, this is your job. You need to figure it out. And you don't, you can't hire, you know, hire help. You don't have that support. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, no, totally get that. I kind of was there at one point because we had a disagreement on who's doing what duties. Um, so I totally get, you know, um, doing things on your own. I would say one for me personally, I find helpful um, brain dumping things that are on my mind that I know that I need to do. So I don't feel overwhelmed with everything that I have to do. So literally just taking time and putting everything on a piece of paper and then going through and kind of prioritizing, okay, like what can wait, what do I need to do now? Um, since I can't really delegate it, you know, you know, what can we, um, pretty much just push off until a later time so that you can really focus on the things that you need to get done that are actually going to make, um, make progress. So I know for for instance, like I had this one little piece of paper that stayed on the floor for a couple of days because I was just like, I, I just can't right now. Like I can't do it <laughs> because there were so many other things going on that were, were more important than me trying to clean up the mess that my, my son made on the floor. Um, not to say that you want to leave a mess on the floor <laughs> for days on end, but you really have to pick and choose Um really what's most important and then tackle things from there and just understand and know that you won't get everything done in one day. It's going to take time because, um, the, the biggest thing for me is, um, feeling like I have to get everything done in order to feel like I've accomplished something. And that is totally not true. So I just want to remind you, if you're listening and you feel like, oh, I have all these things to do, like, it's okay. Like your to-do list is always going to be a million miles long, but just know that, you know, just making slow progress, you'll eventually get it. And then hopefully you'll be able to get the support that you need so that you don't have to do it all on your own. 
So how do you make time for yourself then? You said that you plan out your week in advance. One of the things you said was you plan out your week so you made all the decisions and you can also make sure you have time for yourself. What does that look like in your life with your schedule? Is it a matter of you are getting help so that you can say, oh, Saturday is all for me or like I get this whole evening to myself to go out and you know get pedicures or is it like just a few minutes a day? What does that look like in your life? So I do have time in the mornings. I, I'm one of those early risers and I'm not naturally a morning person. I just want to throw that out there. But that second child of mine, um, a lot of things changed when I had him. And one thing that did change was that um, I started waking up super early and I just kind of carried out that trend because it actually worked for me to be up earlier than the kids. So having that time alone in the mornings is like really huge to me. Like I really need that to be a good mom and a good human being in general. <laughs> I need that time by myself to myself in order to just kind of get ready for the day and get myself centered. Um, and then also to making time on the weekends for myself, because I know a lot of times I focus on my, my kids and especially like my patients who I care for um, at work, everything is about everyone else and no one is taking care of, of me. So I really make a conscious effort to make sure I'm doing something that's taking care of myself, whether it's, you know, going in, you know, getting my hair done or if it's just reading a book or whatever it is, like really kind of tapping in and tuning in and being like, okay, Tony, what do you need? Sometimes it is just a nap. Sometimes it may be a, a treat at Starbucks, but um, just having time to get away by myself um, is really important to me because I have gotten into the trap of trying to do everything with my kids. And then I end up getting upset and resenting them because I don't have that time for myself. So I truly know that, um, sorry, they're screaming back there too. I truly know that having that time alone is really helpful for me as, as an individual. And, and it really doesn't have to be anything complicated. Sometimes it can be really simple. And sometimes it can be elaborate. It all kind of just depends. Like I said, after I take some time to tune in and figure out what I need. And I think that is something that's really important too, because if we get in the habit of thinking, okay, our quiet time has to be this, um, it has to look this way. We have to have the whole evening to ourselves, or we have to have the whole day to ourselves, or we have to go out for pedicures. I mean, that might not even be what you find relaxing. Yesterday, I went shopping. I'm not into shopping. I'm just not. I'm, I'm failing as a woman in this department. I hate shopping. Um, I didn't go for very long, but I was like, I have nothing to wear to church. I need to like go get clothes. It was awful. I mean, it wasn't awful. It was not fun. So it doesn't have to be this thing that you don't enjoy. I think for us as moms, really the most important thing we can do is figure out, okay, what do we actually what recharges us, what actually makes us feel rejuvenated, what is actually going to make a difference. Um, I used to like on Sundays, be like, oh, Sundays is a day of rest. So that means I have to lay around and do nothing. And I hated it. And I felt like I was climbing the walls. And I'm like, this is not resting and re I, like, I'm laying around, but this is not rejuvenating for me. This is not working. Um, so I found out for me, what I really love to do is go for a long run. So on Sundays, it's my Sabbath. It's my day that I'm resting, but I'm not resting by laying on the couch. I'm literally resting by like going and running for a couple hours. And I, when I get done with my run, I feel amazing. Like I'm ready to be a good mom. I've had that time out in nature by myself, away from the kids, like just endorphins and all the things. So I think the biggest thing for moms is not just to say, okay, I can't make time. Like I have kids, I have so much going on, but to just say, okay, what things actually recharge me? What things actually are rejuvenating? What things make me feel like myself? What things bring me life? And then how can I do that even in a little way? Like you said, you know, getting yourself a little treat. Occasionally I might stop and get a coffee, even though I could very well make it at home. And most days I do, but you know, some days you're like, I just want to go and like get some something fancy because it's five bucks and I can. So um, I think that's really helpful just to keep that in mind as well. What other tips and advice do you have for busy moms who are struggling to, like they want to do all the things. They need to be the mom. They need to be the wife. They need to work. They need to do all the things and they feel like they can never keep up. Do you have other tips and advice you would love to share? 
Yeah, I, I really think routines is the the big key for, for helping with dealing with the busyness, in particular, um, having um, an evening routine to kind of help close out the day and get you ready for the next day. Because a lot of times I hear people like say like, oh, the morning routine is like where it's at. Like if you have a good morning routine, your day is going to be amazing. Um, yes and no. And the reason why I say no is because I really feel like it takes some preparation the night before to really make sure that you're set up for success the, the next day. And it can be just simple things like just making sure like an area is tidy so that you don't come in like all frazzled because there's a huge mess. Um, it could be getting your lunches ready for the next day, um, having your to-do list kind of uh, kind of outlined so that you know what to do. But whatever it is that you need to do the next day to be prepared and ready to go, I would say those are the things that you can do in the evening time that will help to set you up for success so that you won't have to be so overwhelmed and be um, subject to like, oh, I'm just so busy. It's just so much to do. Like you'll be ready to like take charge and like conquer the day when you have a really good evening routine. And then also, like I said, making some time for yourself too, to kind of relax. Um, and like you mentioned too, as well, to recharge, because I feel like a lot of times we get into that go, 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 go mentality. And after a while, you're going to burn yourself out. So you have to take some time to pause and, and give yourself whatever it is that you need so that you can recharge and be ready to be an awesome person for the people that um, you're supporting and, and around. So what tips do you have for how moms can start figuring out what these routines look like? So for me, I'm like, I know what things I do in the morning and what things I do at night. But if someone's like, okay, I understand, like I need routines. I need to figure out how to make my day go better. But what do I even do? Like what things should I be doing? And obviously it's not going to look the same for everyone. But how can a mom who's like, okay, I get it. I need routines. But where do I start? Yes, yes. So um, definitely looking at um, what is the thing that stresses you out the most. So for me, the thing that really irritates me is when I come home and my husband's like, what, what are we eating for dinner? Like, I don't know. Like, I just got home. Leave me alone. Like, that's what I really want to say. But <laughs> what I usually say is, okay, honey, let's go look in the kitchen together and figure it out. Um, so if I can eliminate that headache, that will make me feel better. And so that is one thing that I include in my routine um, in the evenings in particular, kind of getting things ready. So, you know, do I need to take the steaks out of the freezer so that they're ready to go? Um, um, and then also to um, cleaning. Cleaning is another big thing around my house. Like it bugs me when things are a huge mess. So like I was saying how it was like a little mess that my son made on the floor. Like he took um, a piece of paper and he cut it up into a million gazillion little tiny pieces. <sighs> Sir, like seriously, <laughs> why did we have to make that mess on the floor? But um, having a routine for making sure that those areas get taken care of eventually um, is another key thing for me to keep me sane and to keep me happy. So I would definitely say start with what stresses you out the most and then see if you can develop a routine around that first. That's a really great idea. I'm trying to think in my head, okay, what is it that stresses me out the most on a daily basis? And for me, it's totally the noise and the chaos of children. I am an introvert. I am very noise sensitive. I don't know why. I literally always have been. Um, I do not like loud noises and I do not like chaos. Some people are like, oh yeah, our house is so loud and so fun. And I'm like, no, I would die. Just me. I'm sorry. Can I deal? I try really hard. Um, but I need some like reasonable volume levels. So for me, what that looks like is, okay, what are the high chaos times of my day and how can I figure out some routines to work for that? So for me, like in the mornings, we have a routine. I actually printed out for my kids a paper that says, you know, here are the things you do in the morning, like a checklist so that I'm not constantly on them. Like, okay, stop touching the dog and like, go do this. Where are your shoes? Like we have those routines specifically for the kids so that they can kind of move from point A to point B. And I feel like that is what is the most helpful for me. Um, as we kind of wrap up our interview today, can you tell us more about where we can find you online? If people would like some more information and specifically, what are we going to go find you online for? I know you talk about systems and routines, um, but what all do you have to offer? 
Yes, yes, yes. So if you are looking for some, just some help, motivation, just some practical tips and strategies for motherhood, you can definitely check me out at realhappymom.com. And wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can find me there as well at Real Happy Mom. I would love for you to come and connect with me and um, check out what we have. And speaking of the, the Sunday routine, I do have a um, Sunday prep checklist that can help you with that so that you don't have to, you know, put together a checklist or anything like that, but I will have it specifically for you. Um, if you go to realhappymom.com slash equipping godly women, I'll have that for you there. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It has been so fun to talk with you and just brainstorm, okay, what does this look like? Two busy working moms who have different routines, but we're figuring out what does it look like for us? And hopefully everybody who's listening is like, okay, I kind of see how they do it. It's not the same. They both have their own little bit of take on it, but here is how I can make that work in my life, which is probably a little bit different as well. And that's beautiful. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. All right, that just about does it for today's episode. If you would love to hear more from Tony Ann, specifically to check out how she does her Sunday planning routine, I would highly encourage you to go check her website at realhappymoms.com. And also, if you want help specifically on, okay, how do I find the time to get in God's word on a regular basis? And how do I make it a time that I actually enjoy and look forward to and get something out of, not just checking another thing off my to-do list each day? Then I would highly encourage you also to check out my brand new book, Fall in Love with God's Word, Practical Strategies for Busy Women. In this book, I walk you through step-by-step, how do you create a quiet time that works for you in your busy life? I'm not giving you a one-size-fits-all, here's what I do. I do share some of that. But okay, here is is how you can make this work for your life. So no matter how busy you are, or no matter what you have going on, if you have little kids, if you're an empty nester, if you work, if you're home, this book is gonna help you figure out, okay, here's how I personally can figure out how I can spend time in God's word and love it and get so much out of it. So if that's something that you think would be helpful for you, I would encourage you to go to the book website, fallinlovewithgodsword.com. You can read the first chapter for free and check it out there. So. As always, um, if you've made it to this far in the interview, thank you for being with us today and make sure that you subscribe wherever you are listening, whether YouTube, Apple Podcasts, um, Stitcher, all of the places, we're on all of them. And I will see you back here again real soon. All right, bye.